has also had speakers, 36 speakers speaking on this uh, uh, important act, sir. Adur Prakash ji, Rajiv Pratap Rudi ji, Rajiv Rai ji, Saugat Rai ji, CN Anadu Rai ji, Magunti Srinivasulu Reddy ji, Dileshwar Kamait ji, Sri Rangappa Barane ji, Bajrang Manohar ji, Kishori Lal ji, Ganesh Singh ji, Ave Kumar Sinha ji, Rajesh Ranjan ji, Sachita Anandam ji, Malvinder Singh ji, Vijay Kumar Dubey ji, Dayanidhi Maran ji, Samadani ji, Rajkumar Sangwan ji, Ramesh Avasti ji, Selvaraj ji, Ravi Kumar ji, Prem Chandran ji, Padwai ji, Praveen Khandelwal ji, Hanuman Benival ji, Chandrasekhar ji, Dattaram Vaikar ji, Sudha ji, Praveen Patel ji, Mohamad Javed ji, Tapir Gao ji, Rahman ji, Ajay Bhatt ji, Jagadambika Pal ji, and Anand Bhaduriya ji. So almost 36 people have participated in this debate, sir. Not only have they participated, they have given some valuable suggestions and also passionately been involved in this debate, sir. And I would like to remind the House, 20 years back, if you would have seen any civil aviation topic that has been discussed in the House, the participants were mainly coming from technical background or they were coming from these major metropolitan cities where the presence of airports has been maximum. But yesterday, if you had witnessed the debate for five hours, we have seen from the length and breadth of this country, from the remotest areas of this country, from the most backward areas of this country, people have passionately, honourable members have spoken on this bill and that is the change this government has brought in and the honourable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has brought in to the civil aviation, sir. Civil aviation has witnessed un imaginable growth in the last 10 years since Modi ji has taken charge as the Prime Minister of the country. He had a special focus, he had a special vision for the civil aviation industry and because of which he understood the importance of improving the infrastructure in civil aviation. That is why what was 74 airports in 2014 has gone up to 157 airports, more than doubled in this country today, sir. And if you look at the passenger growth in this country, 60 million passengers were there domestically in 2014, which has gone up to 153 million, which has more than doubled in 2024, sir. And also international passengers from 43 million have grown up to 66.7 million. And you know, it's like any travel industry which took a big hit during the COVID time, aviation also took a big hit. Even though it took a big hit, big hit within three years, it stood back on its feet. It not only crossed the pre-COVID number, sir, we are at an all-time high in the passenger growth in the country. And today we stand as the third largest aviation economy in the whole world. And that is the change uh, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has brought in the last 10 years for the Civil Aviation Ministry. And also I would like to thank all the previous ministers who have worked on this, especially my predecessor Jyoti Raditya Sindhya ji, who has constantly worked for the upliftment of the Civil Aviation Ministry and uh, brought in a lot of policy changes. And in fact, I would also like to remember our uh, 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 honorable previous uh, uh, minister, Ashok Gajpati Rajuji, who was also there handling this and who was our, from uh, our party also at that time, sir. And with this growth, it is very important we look into the future also. This is not just for the 10 years that we are proud of. We, we are where we are in the third place right now, we, under the honourable uh, leadership of Honourable Prime Minister, want to see India become the number one in the domestic economy, sir. And if you want to see India in that number one position, there has to be proper legislative backing. There has to be good policy making. There has to be good policy which drives the civil aviation industry in that direction. And that is where this Bharatiya Vaiyan Vide comes into play and which is why I would like to go a little bit more detail into the, uh, uh, into the bill also, sir. Now this Bharat, Bharatiya Vaiyan Vidayak, iski jo pehle, uh, isse pehle jo act, the Indian Aircraft Act 1934, this was a pre-independence era act, sir. Under the British rule, this act was formed and the act was originated, promulgated because of an international aircraft convention which was, happen, uh, which was formed in 1919. 1919 mein jo convention banata uske hisab se Indian Aircraft Bill 1934 pre-independence era mein hum leke aai aur uske baad 1944 mein ek Chicago convention bhi aaya Chicago convention aane ke baad IKO ka formation hua IKO jo hai International Civil Aviation Organization 
आई क्या ऐसी बॉडी बनी कि यूएन यूएन की एक एजेंसी थी यूनाइटेड नेशंस की और ये शिकागो कन्वेंशन के बाद जो आई बना आई में हंड्रेड कंट्रीज उसके हिस्से थे और एवरी रेगुलरली ऑल दीज हंड्रेड कंट्रीज यूज टू सिट डिस्कस डेलिबरेट एंड फॉर्मुलेट दी स्टैंडर्ड एंड रिकमेंडेड प्रैक्टिस विच आर अगेन सपोज टू बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड बाई ऑल द मेम्बर कंट्रीज विद इन दी आई एंड इंडिया हैज ऑल्सो बीन अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग पार्टिसिपेंट ऑफ दिस आई क्या एंड वी हैव ट्राई टू फॉर्मुलेट आर ओन लॉस विद बाय हार्मोनाइजिंग वॉट एवर दिस सार्प दैट इज द स्टैंडर्ड्स एंड रिकमेंडेड प्रोटोकॉल्स आर देयर फ्रॉम दी आई क्या एंड दिस हैज बीन हैपनिंग फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम and while we have been doing this sir the 1934 act which was there it was amended 21 times and it was amended in such a way that whenever some sarp new sarp was coming in we were just attaching it to the old bill there was no proper structure and in the end right now the way it has become is that there is no uh, clarity there is a lot of ambiguity in the uh, uh, existing act that is there right now and there is a lot of confusion and in some places there is lot of redundancy also there have become so many subordinate legislations that have been brought in so many rules that have been brought in so many regulations that have been brought in so there was no proper structure for the whole act which is why a proper structural the difference was supposed to be brought in and which was done with the uh, formation of this new vidhayak uh, <coughs> which is bharatiya vayan vidhayak sir and like i said the first thing we have tried to address is structureize the whole bill and we have structureized by giving dgca a separate chapter we have uh, told what is uh, dgca and what are the powers of dgca which is the uh, director general of uh, uh, civil aviation and also we have bcas which is bureau of civil aviation security similarly we have another uh, separate structure for it a separate chapter and also the functions and the powers have been properly listed out and also aib which is aircraft uh, accident investigation bureau and powers of central government jo pehle aisa hota tha ki powers kai aur likhe hue hain aur uh, iske jo functions hai kai aur likhe hue hain rules kai aur likhe hue hain तो आई क्या का भी ऑब्जर्वेशन था कि सब एक प्रिंसिपल एक्ट में होना चाहिए जो एक हार्मनी uh, क्रिएट करता है सिविल एविएशन का तो वो हार्मनी हम लेके आए हैं सर अभी ये सिविल एविएशन में इस बिल के तहत एंड अदर देन दिस वी हैव ट्राइड टू रिड्यूस द रिडेंडेंसीज और जो गैप्स होते थे पहले इसके एक्ट में उसको भी हम करने की कोशिश ये भारतीय वायुयान विधेयक के साथ हम लेके आए इसके बाद दूसरी चीज जो डेफिनेशन हमने ऐड किया we have brought in definitions for design maintenance and manufacture into the bill jo previous bill tha indian aircraft act to usme we didn't have design at all we didn't have the word uh, ma ma maintenance at all and there was just manufacture as a word but it was not defined but today under the leadership of prime minister modi ji we see a strong sense of atmanirbharta being formed in this country sir and civil aviation taking an inspiration from that atmanirbharta we are imagining a uh, we are trying to achieve a position for india in the future where not only we are operating planes in this country we are designing planes we are manufacturing planes and we want to export planes to the whole world also and that is the situation we want to create and that is going to happen exactly that is going to happen because of this bharat vayan vidhayak that is going to come sir and especially the word design we have added the design adding of the word design is going to create an area where lot of industry players are going to come which is going to improve the design area of the manufacturing sir already HAL is manufacturing Hindustan 228 which is a 19 seater plane Dhruv is there from HAL which is a 14 seater helicopter and also NAL is also making another plane now if you add this the, if you bring in these changes in the legislation then the state of design ICAO will recognize India as a state of design which will improve our prospects globally also sir to bring in talent which will uh, attract in creating design here and also whatever we design or manufacture that is also going to be uh, uh, accepted worldwide also so it was very important for us at this stage the changes that is happening throughout the country it was very important for us to define design maintenance and manufacture which is the major driver in the civil aviation sector today sir and that is what we have brought in to the bill also today
and the other one before bringing this bill here lot of wide consultations have happened both internally and externally also from the public we have received the feedback from internally bgca bcas ai era aib and also externally ministry of defense ministry of home affairs ministry of uh, external affairs finance ministry dpit department of telecom all these were widely consulted and all their feedback was taken in before we have brought in this bhartiya vayan vidhek into the august house sir and another important feature that bill is this bill is addressing this is a feedback that we have received from the pilots especially the pilots who are getting trained and trying to achieve, uh, obtain their cpl license commercial pilot license sir before they obtain this commercial pilot license there is one certificate that is required which is the radio telegraphy telephony certificate this rtr radio te telephony restricted certificate which was supposed to be given on the basis of the previous act this was supposed to be given by department of telecom now once they before obtaining the cpl they had to go to department of telecom and get this license once they get the license from department of telecom they come back to dgca which is under the ministry of civil aviation and they get flight radio telephony operator license once they get the flight telephony uh, uh, operator's license then they again get the commercial pilot license which is the cpl now this process of going to two departments just for that certificate for radio telephony there was a lot of feedback from the pilots and especially that industry the training industry that this is creating a lot of problem for them now going through two uh, departments you you uh, the chair would also know how difficult the system gets over over the years when there are different kinds of people and especially dgca has the expertise for the radio telephony in aviation which is why it has the capacity to uh, uh, give flight radio telephony operators license so the feedback from the industry has been that why don't you shift this from the department of telecom and put it within the ministry of civil aviation and this with this bill we have addressed that feedback sir and we have shown that this is a government which listens to the public which does what was the public needs and that is the change that we have brought in this with the bill also and also another important change that we have brought with this sir is regarding the appeal section i i thought lot of people would talk about this but not lot of people have uh, thrown some light on this but there have been lot of inconsistent inconsistencies in the earlier act which was related to the appeal sir and there was provision for appeal against only financial penalties administrative penalties there was nothing written in the earlier act which was addressing the appeals on administrative penalties only financial penalties there was an appeal and there was only one appeal that was allowed but now we thought when we are trying to change this bill trying the act and bring in a new bill we have decided that we are going to implement the principles of natural justice and whenever how the industry treats treats the appeals how other departments are treating the appeals we are going to bring that structure into this and that is what we have done here also sir so any time any action is taken the first show cause notice the person who are against whom the action is being taken he will be properly heard and he will be given a chance to go for two appeals and there will be a proper tribunal also after the appeals so that he can get the principles of he can avail his principle of natural justice and that we have accommodated here and just like i said earlier there was only for financial penalty the appeal was there now we have added administrative enforcement also so that there is a uh, opportunity for appeal there also sir and also earlier the principal act the indian aircraft act only carried certain provisions regarding the action of suspension of licenses certificate or approvals the other sections which uh, which come under uh, uh, restrictions they were addressed to some other rules now we have done we have brought everything into the principal act so that there is a legislative backing so there is a clear flow of uh, 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 instructions on how the restrict uh, licenses or certificates how they get uh, suspended or how they get restricted or how they get cancelled all this has been brought into the principal act which is going to create a lot of uh, clarity on uh, how the appeals and also how the licenses are being done in this uh, uh, country sir so these are some of the important points that the bill covers and i feel that whatever uh, members have raised regarding the uh, issues of the bill i was able to cover with this sir and especially there has been some discussion on the naming of the bill also bhartiya vayan vidayak i don't see what the problem is sir i have calculated how many words are there in the act 11643 words are there in the entire act 
out of 11,643 uh, words, only three words, only three words are in this Bharatiya Vayan Videk. The rest of the text is completely in English. So there is no way how people feel that we are imposing certain thing. And in fact, when you are bringing these three words also, everyone should feel happy. I was hearing someone saying that you come from Telugu land and you are accepting this. Of course, I will accept it. It is an Indian language. We are all proud of all the Indian languages that are there. And Bharatiya Vayu and Vidaya. In Telugu also, Bharati is Bharati only, sir. In Telugu, Vayu is also Vayu only, sir. Yes. So I treat this as a Telugu name also. And I treat it as a Sanskrit name also. I treat it as a very, any other Indian language. So just by bringing the name of this act, I feel that everyone should feel proud of this and not oppose the naming of the act, sir. That is one point that I wanted to uh, ensure this. And other than this, one of the important issues that have also been raised uh, during the speeches, one was the airfares issue, sir. And it has been constantly coming up. Let it be zero hour, let it be private members, or let it be question hour. And through the bill also many members have raised this. And in fact, I have already uh, mentioned this after taking charge as the minister also said that one of my top priorities would be to make the airfares affordable and uh, accessible to the common man of this country. Because there should be our, some mechanism for flexible. I will get into it. <coughs> because our whole intention, our intention of the NDA government is that till now, till 2014, sir, this civil aviation was always like it was for certain sections of the civilized society. It was like civilized, civilized aviation. But once Honorable Prime Minister took charge, once Narendra Modi ji has taken charge, civil aviation was considered as civilian aviation, sir, and that is what our commitment is even today also. And to make it civil aviation, civilian aviation, this is a very important point which the ministry is also taking very seriously. But I would also like to tell the house that we have to understand the dynamics around the airfares also. It is not just the airline saying that Achha, tomorrow I will just put this air price at so and so uh, price. There is a certain mechanism. There are lot of other factors which, uh, uh, which are included in the uh, airfares like uh, the ATF, sir, the fuel uh, cost, the airport security fee, user development fee, landing charges and lot of these factors and uh, taking into account the market demand also and especially when some vacations are there or some special events are happening. So there are lot of dynamic factors which get included in deciding the fare of the, this thing. And also yesterday when a lot of people were speaking, they were also mentioning that how certain carriers have gone out of, uh, uh, out of system also. Some uh, important uh, airlines like Jet Airways and uh, other Deccan Airways and some important airways which were very uh, optimistic in the area of uh, civil aviation, they've all uh, uh, exited the uh, aviation market, sir. So we have to create a balance. Now if you see, we create so much pressure on the airlines that they totally are not in a situation to run, then we don't have any planes to run only. So we have to create a balance and that is the balanced approach that the ministry is also looking at. Where there is a balanced approach, the airlines also shouldn't misuse or take advantage of the position of the passenger. And also at the same time, we are creating a level playing field so that the airlines also operate at a certain stage in the country. But on the directions of speakers are also last time when there was a discussion on this, he said, why don't you meet the airlines? And we are doing it from the ministry, sir. We are meeting, having meetings with the airlines industry. And we are trying to ensure that there is no misuse or there is no uh, disadvantage uh, for the uh, passenger here. And especially I would like to mention in the house also because a lot of people have raised this issue across the benches, sir. And even speaker, sir, has also taken cognizance of this. So we are thinking, sir, of setting up an online mechanism to take in grievances from not just the MPs, from also the public. And we will put up a team in the ministry which is going to specifically look about these issues where they feel undue advantage has been taken or unnecessarily some unreasonable hike has happened in airfares. Whenever there is an issue like this, you can, we are going to create an online system which will take care of the grievances. You can put in your grievances and timely, with timely response, we are going to address this one and we are going to make sure that there is no undue advantage that has been taken by the passenger. And this much I want to tell the uh, uh, honorable members of this house, sir. 
And other than this, one important scheme that has been brought in by Honourable Prime Minister, I would like to uh, mention it to the House again, sir, which is the RCS scheme. RCS Udan scheme was a total game changer for the civil aviation market in the country. And we should all be proud by the great vision Honourable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji had to create this scheme back in 2016 itself, sir. And I, I take great pride in uh, talking about this RCS Udan scheme, which is Regional Connectivity Scheme, Ude Desh Ka Aam Nagrik. And some of the success stories this has created. Now, I could see the, uh, the positivity of most of the people, members who have spoken yesterday also. They have been proudly talking about the airports in their uh, districts, airports in their constituency, how they have increased, how they want more connectivity happening, how they want the terminal capacity to increase. And I would like to take certain examples. One example is Darbanga Airport, sir. Darbanga Air City is a very historical city. When this was from the Maithili time, it was a very historic and important city. And it had one airstrip there, sir, which was running during 1950 and 1962. After 1962, there was no plane there. It was totally taken away from the civil aviation map of this country. And when RCS came into play, when Udan came into play, this was in 2020, after the airport was upgraded with spending 120 crores to the Udan scheme, the first flight from Darbanga took off in 9th, on 9th November 2020. And since then, sir, this was in 2020, the first fly, flight took off. And in the year 2022-23, this was after the COVID also, the airport handled 6 lakh passengers in the whole year, sir. And that was the kind of change the RCS has brought in the, for this Darbanga. And Jarsuguda Airport, there was no airport in Western Odisha. And there was a huge interest for all the people from Western Odisha that we should have an airport. Before 2014, before this RCS scheme, there was nothing which was addressing this issue. But once RCS was brought into place, even this Jarsiguda airport, we have spent up to 202 crores, where we have created a new airport. And once that airport was brought in, 2019 first flight took off. And now that uh, terminal is handling 2 lakh passengers per year, sir, which is a great achievement for uh, Jarsiguda airport. Then we have Pitoragad airport. Kalburgi Airport, Kishangad Airport, examples are numerous, sir, and these come from all the cities, all the states, all the union territories of this country. So this was the grand vision that Narendra Modi ji had, where we are going to take up those remote areas, where there is a lot of demand for people to uh, uh, travel through airplanes. So that was when this RCS was promulgated and it was brought into effect. And we are running on the tune of five, more than 500 routes have started under RCS, sir. And more than 1.4 crore people of this country have traveled through this RCS routes. And that is something which we all should be proud of, sir. And uh, uh, other, th uh, other than that, we are going to, because of the success of this scheme, we are going to uh, t uh, improve the scheme, sir. We, in the coming days, with the help of the central government, we are going to bring in RCS again because it was a 10-year plan. And uh, now we are seeing that there are some uh, issues when the RCS is specifically for three years. Because the way that scheme was done is that for three years, we are going to help a certain airport or a certain uh, route to take off. But it, it was not for a continuous time that the government is going to provide the support. We wanted to create the impetus. We wanted to create the push and the spark. So for three years we were supporting. But now a, speci a, a specific situation has arrived where after three years the airlines sometimes are backing away from that route. That also has been expressed by a lot of people. So we are going to address that issue. We have a process where after one year we can re-bid uh, that route and we can restart that route through RCS. And we need to extend the scheme of RCS because it has been a huge success and it has given a huge push to the civil aviation also. So definitely we are going to look into the expanding of RCS also, sir. And other than that, in the area of civil, uh, civil aviation, just like how the interest is growing on uh, for having more airports and airlines, we want to have seaplanes also. That, that has been also a brainchild for uh, Narendra Modi ji. Who ha he wants to see the seaplane industry also grow in this country. And there was certain policy which was made earlier, but we have taken industry feedback also on seaplane policy. They have requested for change, uh, some change, uh, changes. We have done those changes, and very soon we are going to launch the new policy also. And that is going to open up a new whole uh, uh, area of air travel, sir. Wherever you have, wherever you have, uh, after you can, wherever you have these dams, Wherever you have these lakes, wherever you have the sea connectivity, you can use the seaplane connectivity to uh, connect those places 
again, which is going to create an alternate way of traveling, sir. So sea planes is something we are looking at, and helicopters, sir. Now, if you look at the situation in India, helicopters are very, very low compared to the population or the size of the country we have. A Brazil city, Brasilia, itself has more than 500 helicopters, and we are looking at 250 something helicopters in the whole country. So there is a great opportunity to tap into the helicopter services in this country, sir. So what civil aviation is doing regarding it? We want to encourage manufacturing of helicopters in the country. We are trying to push it. Now, like I've said, there is the state of design element which is there in the Bharatiya Vaiyan Vidayak, which is going to improve the setting up of plants, uh, set, uh, designing these helicopters. And once we have that network within the country, I am sure there is a lot of, uh, uh, if the states can also support us. And I would like to specifically take the uh, state of Madhya Pradesh to give as an example. Sir, they are doing a wonderful job. They have connected their religious uh, tourism circuits with helicopters. They have uh, connected medical tourism. Uttarakhand Ames has also put in one helicopter there so that it can cater to the difficult terrain, uh, uh, the un unreachable areas in that uh, state. So there are a lot of uses that helicopter services can provide also. And we, on behalf of uh, Civil Aviation Ministry, are strongly looking into this area. And with the help of support from uh, states, we, I am very sure, sir, that helicopter services are also going to increase multifold in the coming uh, days to come. And uh, there have been some other uh, specific, most of the members, sir, and especially I would like to thank uh, Honorable uh, Senior Member of the House, Rudy Ji, who has spoken yesterday, and it is a home court advantage for him. Whenever there is a civil aviation, it's a home court advantage. He brings in all the experience that he has, and uh, he has he has rightfully elevated the discussion that was happening yesterday, and I'm very, very thankful to him for uh, bringing in so much knowledge and he's enlightening. A pilot. He's, a pilot. he's a pilot himself. He's a pilot himself. We recognize, the House recognizes, and he has elevated the whole sense of the debate here, and he has enlightened and how the civil aviation industry in India originated and how it traveled through over the years. And one specific uh, uh, mention he has done about Aero Club of India. And we take, uh, we take pride in Aero Club of India. It has the, all the services. And in future, we are going to see how we can collectively use the wisdom of Aero Club of India in the uh, growth of civil aviation in this country. And I'm definitely looking into it personally also regarding this, sir. And uh, some uh, other suggestions like airfares was there, I've already addressed, sir. We will form a specific team in the ministry which is going to look into the, which is look into the, uh, 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 the airfares uh, issue. And also, most of the members have talked individually about their state, their airports in the state, or their uh, airports within their own, uh, uh, own constituency. So I would say, sir, it is very difficult. 60, 36 members have spoken, and the names of the airports that have taken are more than 50. Each individual airport has a specific, uh, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say a problem, but they have a specific update, which I want to give to the uh, honorable members. So if possible, I would extend. Uh, through, through this uh, August House, sir, whenever they have the time, they come and see me so that I can sit with them and explain to them exactly what is the necessary uh, thing that needs to be done regarding that airport, sir. And I want to uh, tell from the side of the ministry that we are interested in creating more airports. We want the infrastructure around airports to increase. And the only challenge, the big challenge that we find today is the availability of land. Which is why Saugadda was speaking yesterday, sir. And he was mentioning, ye sab ye thoda show off ki tarah ke aapne itne airport bana diye, itne airlines chal rahe, ye show off ki baat nahi hai, sir. If we wouldn't have tackled the infrastructure problem today, it is going to be a huge challenge in the future. Aaj agar hum ye airports ki issue ko aaj hum settle nahi karte, aaj to lag raha hoga, har jagah hume lagega ki ye pichda is jila ke yahan pe airport ki kya zorat hai? Yahan pe to kuch aur ban sakta hai. But very soon that place is going to need airport, sir. And when that airport requirement is there, you won't get any land. So that is something which needs to be addressed today. And it has to be addressed by the states themselves, sir. This has, airport has got a great potential to drive a state. And there are numerous examples like this. I can take the example of Shamshabad Airport, which was uh, done in Hyderabad. Under our uh, then Chief Minister, he was there, sir. He is now Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh also, Chandrababu Naidu ji. He envisioned, he took this village and uh, uh, Shamshabad where they have collected 5,000 acres. And that 5,000 acres at that time, people were saying, why do you need 5,000 acres for the airport? And today, if you look at it, after 20-odd uh, years, sir, 
that 5,000 acres is not enough right now for uh, the services that the airports are requiring. And this is a challenge many big cities are facing today. Chennai, Mumbai, Kolkata, all these places if you see, all of them are very tightly knit into small lands right now. And they are, we want to expand those airports, but there is no land available. And if you want to acquire more land, the price of the land has become so much that it is totally unviable to do expansion in those areas. So I am advising all the uh, members here and also through you to the states uh, that you represent, that if you can focus on getting that land parcels today itself, you are going to create an airport infrastructure which is going to be useful for generations to come. It is very difficult tomorrow to address this land issue. Even today, yesterday when I was hearing the speeches, a lot of people have already mentioned about land acquisition, how it is a problem. Right now only if you want to uh, take those areas for airport development, there are a lot of land acquisition problems just like anywhere else. So we have to tackle this problem, sir. And from our side, whatever support is needed from the central government, we are going to provide just like we have done for the last 10 years. And we are committed to improve the airport infrastructure in this country under the uh, uh, leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. And that is our commitment to all the states. Patna Airport. Patna Airport also, Honorable Member has spoken about it. Whatever state, see the state land is with the state right now. And whatever land the state provides, the way we approach it is we first give the site clearance. We do an inspection, thorough inspection. Can an airport come here? Can it be viable? Can the flights land there? Is the, is the site in such a way that can we uh, build a proper runway there for big flights, wide body flights, narrow body flights. So all this survey we do and we give a site clearance. Once that is done, you go into land acquisition and in principle. So wherever you have a request of a new airport, so if there is a land parcel available or if there is an airstrip available, there has already a lot of research done from the Ministry of Civil Aviation, but in the case there is no update for you, you can hand over to me again a request for that specific place. I will give you a specific update on what that site, uh, the status of that site is. And with the cooperation from the state and central government, I can assure you if everything goes uh, perfectly, then we can very soon build an airport in that place. So don't, uh, uh, don't uh, restrict yourself. If you have any place in mind, please let me know so that I can get it inspected. And I'm going to uh, provide all support from the ministry so that we can build airports there. So that was regarding the airport, individual airports. And especially during connectivity, uh, for connectivity also, there have been a lot of requests. Key. We have an airport now, we want to improve on the connectivity. Now again, connectivity is a market-driven exercise that is being done by the airlines. We don't have a specific rule saying, or uh, we don't have the specific power to say to the airlines, Ki, achai, abdu, you just have to start this route from today. But through RCS, we have done a bidding process where these unconnected routes or unserved airports, underserved airports, they are all uh, given certain viability gap funding so that the unconnected airports are connected. So in that sense, if there is any airport which comes under the RCS category, then definitely we are going to provide the support and ensure that proper connectivity is given. And all other requests that you have, let it be for domestic flights or international flights. And uh, I, even though that is not the direct responsibility of the government, we are trying through a favorable way to push the request to the airlines so that they can be considered as and when there is a possibility of considering them. Sir, these are some of the main issues that were mentioned yesterday. And uh, other than this, sir, I, I think any, any issue from any member that has been raised, and uh, especially Saugadda, uh, he is not here. But one thing, uh, I take objection from what he has said, sir. Buddhi, not, Buddhist circuit. Sir, your Buddhist circuit is also there. And uh, we are definitely going to uh, sit uh, with the state government and do it, sir. And also, uh, if uh, Honorable Speaker Sir was there, I would have told him also we have given uh, site clearance for Kota Airport, where he has been very strongly pursuing from his side also. And sir, this will start, then everyone will come. I will give it to Alex, sir. I will give it to everyone, Alex. Yes, these, all these grievances he, that you he, have regarding... He is ready to invite to any Honorable Member. Any grievances mm -hmm. that you have regarding airlines or airfares, welcome, we are welcome. going to create a proper system where we have a team in the ministry which is going to address all these issues. We are going to create a very uh, efficient system where you can provide us with all the details. If, you, if there is a specific airfare that you feel there has been an unreasonable hike, you provide us on which website you have taken it. 
uh, what what was the timing of the plane, which plane, and all. If you can provide the details, we'll do a thorough research from our side, and we if there has been any misuse of the rights the, uh, of the uh, passengers, then we are going to take strict action also. And we have done this in uh, uh, before also, sir. And other than the one... You know, please, please, kindly you address to the chair. Sir, please like I said, land is totally, totally state subject, sir. Land is totally state yes, subject. Sir. If you feel somewhere it is very high, then it is up to the state only to look at alternate land uh, uh, proposals. We are not saying that airport should be restricted to one specific area. You can look at four or five areas and we can provide you with all the inputs where it can be feasible. So, uh, if there is a certain parcel that becomes very expensive, it is up to the state to look at other alternatives also. And I would like to uh, take the point of Saugat Daji. When he has... Kani Moji ji, this is, is it not fair? I think so. I think so. So many members have already raised concern if he is responding and once minister if he is replying. So at least he should not finish. So I think so should not. No, you, can ask. you can ask later on. When I will allow you, you can ask later on. Sir, I'm, I, I will say that I am very, very accessible to everyone, sir. Any request that they have, I am willing to meet anyone. At any time that they specify, I'll give them take proper a, update. You take a cognizance of Kani Yes, Tutugudi Airport, sir, definitely we take. There is, there is a terminal building under construction there, and you have also uh, requested many times to speed up the process, and our ministry is trying to push it up also. We are trying, and uh, Mumbai may be here, sir, uh, Navi Mumbai Airport which is a game changer airport for the whole Mumbai city. And that lot of people have expressed concern on when it is going to open. It is go it's been going on for a long time. But I personally visited that airport. I've taken a review, sir, and we have given a strict deadline that by April 1st, the first flight has to land and take off from that place. And we are, we are ensuring that they stick to their deadlines. There is... <laughs> yeah. April 2nd, April 2nd. <laughs> so many of the airports, we are trying to uh, trying to put a time bound uh, uh, deadline so that they complete uh, their their work on time and the uh, people can uh, uh, access all these airports sir and coming back to this uh, last point that i wanted to mention sogadda has mentioned that everything is getting privatized airlines air india de diya apne to ab to koi ye seat ka upgrade bhi kisi se puch nahi sakte ye sir pehle hota hoga sir ye sifarish culture 2014 se और इसी सिफारिश कल्चर के साथ एयर इंडिया का कर्जा 80,000 तक चला गया सर उसके उसी के वजह से ये नुकसान हुआ एयर इंडिया पूरा हमें जाना छोड़ना पड़ा बट अभी जो है सर ये मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सिविल एविएशन डजेंट get requests of seats upgrade sir we get requests of airports upgradation we get requests of airport infrastructure upgradation we get requests of uh, facilities upgradation so we are we have taken the level of civil aviation from just recommending for seat upgrade to airports upgrade sir and this has only happened because of the vision honorable prime minister narendra modi ji had and that is the commitment we all are showing uh, to the country also and there is a lot of lot of scope and potential sir especially with the mro industry also and I have replied in one of the answers the growth especially from two billion dollar industry in seven years we are going to hit four billion dollars industry in MROs which also has a great potential for job creation in this country sir so lot of different sectors in civil aviation are being looked upon and this Bharatiya Vayan Videyak encapsulates all of them and creates a, gives a good direction and it harmonizes all the SARPs that have been set by IKEA, which is a United Nations agency for civil aviation. And we are globally trying to maintain a top standard where we just don't operate within ourselves, but we set standards for the whole world itself. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at a very uh, promising uh, 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 sector in civil aviation, sir. And I would like to personally thank uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji, who has given the responsibility of handling civil aviation at a very young age, sir. I didn't have any expertise on the civil aviation, but he had the confidence on the young uh, member of this uh, country, sir. He he has the vision that if it is in, in, in the hands of a young minister, then it is definitely going to go very high. So that is uh, one thing I want to thank Honorable Prime Minister and also our leader, Chandra Babu Naidu ji, for giving me the opportunity. And uh, on behalf of me and also our Minister of State, Murlidhar Mahal ji, we are both young ministers here, sir, and we want to do a lot of uh, 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 good things for civil aviation and we have received the support yesterday, people who are speaking from both sides.
they've all given a lot of support and they've all encouraged us as young ministers from both sides. So uh, all on behalf, on behalf of the Ministry of Civil Aviation, I would like to thank all the members from each side, everyone who has shown support to us. And with this kind of support that you are giving to the Civil Aviation Ministry, we are sure that we are going to reach number one in the domestic aviation market in the whole world. And that is still our commitment. And while I say that is our commitment, we are going to ensure that in whatever we do in this civil aviation ministry, it is going to be addressed as civilian aviation ministry. Civilian is going to be the topmost priority for us and that we are going to ensure, sir. And for that, this bill plays a very important role, Bharatiya Vayan Videyak. And I request the whole house, just like they've supported through their speeches yesterday, to support in the passing of this important bill, which creates and gives a new direction for the civil aviation industry in the country. And with these words, I thank you once again for giving me the time. Thank you very much, sir. Kani Modi ji. Kani Modi ji. I think so. Kani Modi is satisfied now. You are satisfied, na? Prasniya hai ki vidhayak par vichar kiya jaye. Jo sadas iske paksh mein hai, wo haan kahe. जो सदस्य विरोध में हैं वो ना कहें मेरे विचार में निर्णय हाँ वालों के पक्ष में हुआ हाँ वालों के पक्ष में हुआ विधेयक पर विचार करने हेतु प्रस्ताव को स्वीकृत किया जाता है अब सभा विधेयक पर खंडवार विचार करेगी